Welcome to this week's episode of The Second Scoop. I'm Chris Chang, here to give you this week's Big Gun News. In our lead story, former rapper Snoop Dogg, who made millions and millions of dollars and based his whole career out of glorifying gun violence, is now the lead spokesperson for an anti-gun campaign called I'm Unloading. The I'm Unloading campaign is encouraging 401k owners to divest of any funds that are involved with the gun industry. I've been affected by gun violence over the years. It's through deaths of friends and family members and associates. So wait a minute. The premise of this whole thing is we're going to parade out a bunch of celebrities and athletes But instead of blaming the person, they're blaming the gun, and by extension here, gun companies. And what I don't understand, it's as if they're saying, well, gun companies are promoting violence, they're promoting the use of their products in an irresponsible and illegal way, and and that's just false. You don't hear anybody in the firearms industry promoting the illegal, unsafe use of firearms. And so this whole campaign, it's, it's dishonest at, at worst. And at best, it's just a short-term publicity stunt that I don't think is going to be very effective. Now, if these groups were really concerned about reducing gun violence, we should look at the root causes of violence. Oftentimes, that's mental history and also a history of prior criminal activity. And so what really irks me is that this campaign is basically saying that the firearms industry is only responsible for bad things. Therefore, we want to divest, encourage divestment in their funds and basically try and shut gun companies down. What this is failing to acknowledge is that firearms obviously play a very positive role in American society, giving people the ability to protect themselves from criminals Every single day, my inbox is filled with numerous stories of a good guy with a gun or a good gal with a gun. So in conclusion, again, I just find it so hypocritical that someone like Snoop Dogg, who made his whole career promoting gun violence, he's made millions and millions of dollars off of crime and people dying uh, by the hands of crazy people with guns, is now promoting an anti-gun campaign. This whole I'm unloading campaign is, quite frankly, silly, and it's just going to be ineffective. In our next story, the Washington Post reported a study that showed gun ownership is decreasing. However, gun sales are at an all-time high. These data points conflict a little bit, and so the hypothesis is that the increase in gun sales is due to current gun owners buying more guns and adding them to their existing collections. Now, there are other studies out there that are showing the opposite. So, you know, you have one one poll or one study it shows one thing and hey, you can easily have another study that shows the others. And so I think the jury's out on the whole question of whether gun ownership is decreasing or staying the same or increasing. But one thing that we should be thankful for in the study is that support for gun rights is at an all time high. And that is great news. And a big part of that is through you watching shows like The Second Scoop, talking to your friends and family and coworkers about your support of the Second Amendment. And this is grassroots change at its most pure, fundamental level. Thank you for continuing to support our civil rights. In our third story, National Rifle Association Executive Vice President Wayne LaPierre recently went on to Lou Dobbs to talk about the Obama AR-15 ammo ban. The, the media doesn't want the American public to know what this president is trying to impose on him. I mean, this is a president that he's grasping for straws. He hates the Second Amendment. He hates the fact Americans have a constitutional right to own firearms. He can't win at the ballot box. He can't win in the Congress. And now he's trying to act like a dictator and planning on forcing this ban, ammo ban, on the American public by executive regulation. The ATF's reasoning for banning the 5.56 green tip round is that it can penetrate armor, but if we follow that reasoning, there are larger, common, popular hunting rounds such as the 30-06, the 300 Win Mag, and additional calibers that can also penetrate armor. And so if the 5.56 ammo ban is successful, we can only see what direction this is going to go in, where they're going to go after additional calibers, and of course, where does this stop? Once it gets started, it will never stop until all ammunition 
has made illegal. LaPierre had this to say about the lame duck Obama administration and the Second Amendment. The minute he got elected, he's done nothing but try to destroy the Second Amendment. He's not going to back off. These next 700 days are the most dangerous days in the history of the Second Amendment. Thanks, Wayne. I agree. We've got to stay on top of the Obama administration. And now that he has no more elections to run for, any lame duck president is going to try and wield his executive powers and take risks and do some oftentimes pretty silly things in their final days of office. We're going to make sure that we stop the Obama administration from banning ammo from banning AR-15s and banning anything else that they may think of in these final days of his administration. If you haven't contacted the administration to voice your opposition to the 556 green tip ammo ban, head on over to nraila.org slash stop BATFE and spend 15 seconds to fill out a web form and your elected officials will be contacted and it is so quick and easy and it will have a tremendous impact in securing our Second Amendment rights for the future. In this week's Good Guy with a Gun story brings us to Fulton County, Georgia, where at 11.45 a.m., broad daylight, a man had a number of burglars banging on his door and he grabbed his pistol because there had been other burglaries in the neighborhood. When he came downstairs, the burglars kicked the door open and the homeowner subsequently engaged in a gunfight with the burglars. The homeowner exchanged about 30 to 40 rounds. And if this isn't a good example of the need for standard capacity 17 round plus magazines, then I don't know what is. One of the suspects was found wounded by police in the woods nearby. And that's this week's story of a good guy with a gun. Well, that's it for this week's episode of The Second Scoop. Can you believe how quickly it went by? But I'm already excited to come back to you next Tuesday with another delicious serving of Second Amendment news. I'm Chris Chang for The Second Scoop. Thanks for watching.